The used car market right now, wild to say the least. Like even that is an understatement. I mean, try to find a 350Z right now that's like under 10K with a clean title. It's just not gonna happen. Trust me, I tried. With some of our favorite cars going for more than ever before, it may seem that all hope is lost for the next few years to be able to scoop up another fun car, but that might not be just so. Even though pretty much everything has been affected by this crazy surge in used vehicle prices, some weren't hit nearly as bad. And honestly, it might just be because some people just straight up forgot about them. And when everyone had some extra cash in their pockets with all the stimmy check the last couple years or so, these cars got left behind. So good news, we were able to find and put together a list of some of the cars that are not only fun to drive and own, but also won't break the bank on today's episode of Strap for Cash. Some of these cars on the list, I will admit, do come from a personal experience from owning them in the past. And even though they may not be the most sought after cars of their type, or maybe not the highest trim level that they could be, they're still an absolute blast to drive. The first car on the list falls right into this category, which is the E36 generation of the 325i. Rear wheel drive, straight six manual with just a little under 190 horsepower makes these things an incredible ton of fun for not a lot of cash. I'll be honest, when I picked mine up for 230,000 miles for 900 bucks, expectations were pretty low, but goddamn, was that the best winter beater that I ever had. Might have had to pop the clutch like 80% of the time when I went to start it, but whatever. I really did love that car, even though $900 E36s are pretty much impossible to come by today, at least in operational shape, you can still snag a pretty decent deal on an E36 325i right now. Now, if you wanted to go a step further, there, maybe find a 328i. You can also do that, a little more power, but they seem to be going for a little more money as well. Either way, the E36 platform is a solid go-to when looking to get into an inexpensive rear-wheel drive car. The car is pretty much well-balanced and the suspension is quite a bit of an upgrade, especially when you look at the previous generations before it. And not to mention, they can look damn good with a nice set of wheels and drop and ride height. Maybe throw a little bit of arrow on it and call it a day. I don't know, they really don't need that much. I might be a sucker for like boxy Euro cars of the 90s, but so be it. If you shop around enough right now, you should be able to pull one of these in anywhere between five and $7,000. It may seem if you want anything boosted right now that you're going to be offering up some sort of internal organ to pay for it unless you're looking for a Mark IV GTI. Now, I would have definitely expected these things to like skyrocket a lot more than they did, don't get me wrong. They were definitely affected by all these crazy prices, but not as bad as I thought they were going to. Seems like everyone went for like something newer, like newer than 2010 for some reason. Either way, the Mark IV GTI has been a pretty respected car that has been around since the early 2000s. The 1.8T, as troublesome as it may be, still makes these cars incredibly fun to drive. I mean, the cars themselves are small, and when it sounds like a goddamn tractor with a jet engine strapped to it, it's bound to put a smile on your face. On the other hand, if you're not about the boost life, you want a little more displacement, maybe a little bit more reliability, you can always get these bad boys with a good old VR6 instead. Now, like I mentioned before, these aren't really known to be the most reliable cars in the world, and these things get passed around more than like a UV blue bottle at a high school party. Honestly, you might find some Mark IV GTIs there as well. Just make sure you know what you're getting into. Don't just go buy one of these sight unseen. That's how you have a bad time. And that's how you go broke like really, really quick. But as of right now, these guys are going anywhere between five and 8K, depending on mileage and condition, and of course, what engine is it. Speaking of reliability and maintenance and importance of past vehicle ownership, we get to the third car on the list, which is one of my favorites. Of course, the good old Apex and Coolant Seal blowing RX-8 itself. Why would I open it up with that statement? I don't know, because if I didn't, the comment section would just roast me. Anyway, jokes aside, the RX-8 is an incredibly fun and underrated car. You get a high revs and fun sounds of a rotary without dropping like 20 to 50k on like a FC or FDR X7 right now. You want to talk about cars that skyrocketed with those two motherfuckers right there. Now it may not be the fastest car in the world. It definitely isn't the most reliable thing out there right out of the gate, but the driving experience is absolutely incredible. Getting to rev it out to 9,000 RPM and everything just feels smooth. Everything's smooth. No vibrations, no rattles, just pure rotary goodness. Suspension setups on these things, absolutely incredible. Giving you quite the connection with the road being able to rip 
through the corners really nice. The only really downside is the fact that it is unlike any other engine platform and requires you to care for it unlike any other engine platform. There are things that you can do to prolong the life of the engine, and a lot of people have reported some pretty good luck with a lot of that preventive maintenance and modifications to get the longest life out of them as possible. Would recommend getting a manual version since they are a little more powerful than the automatics, as the manuals came with a six port version of the Renesis and the automatics only came with a four port. Also, the S2 generation seems to be one that a lot of people go for versus the S1, which can also impact price a bit, but typically you're looking anywhere between five and nine K, which is what you're going to be expecting for a Mazda RX-8 right now. And if you get one, let me know. We can go like cruising the mountains together, the valleys together, and make the countryside smell like burning oil. It'd be a great time. The Euro cars by far have taken like ownership of this list. I'll just get that out right away. We get in car number four, which is the first generation of the bubbly Audi TT, the only all wheel drive car on the list. Now I'm not gonna lie, these things didn't really age the greatest over the last 20 years or so, but they can still be incredibly fun and pretty quick, honestly. <laughs> And you know, they can make them look pretty good too. Riley, who works here, used to have one. I think he did a really good job with it. You know, that car looked really good. Anyway, the first gen TT sports, of course, the 1.8T engine, pumping out all that 180 horsepower. The thing is really like just a rounder all wheel drive GTI. I mean, it's even got a hatchback. I really think it does come down to like the stock looks of these things that really kept the price down and had a lot of people looking at other options over the last few years. But to be honest, they can be a pretty great buy and definitely something you don't see every day anymore. For around 7 and 9k you can scoop one of these up for yourself and have something a little fun and a little different to rip around in. Now the last car on the list honestly took me a bit to find and I really didn't know what I was going to you know put on this list and it really came down to a couple of different options but I remember that this one car really is kind of what got me into cars in the first place. My cousin owned one and I thought man you know this thing's kind of really cool. Whenever we go for a ride somewhere I always really enjoyed it. And the last car on the list today is gonna to be the Acura RSX. Now these cars have a lot of good things going for them. Their reliability and aftermarket sport of a Honda car, as well as the appearance and to be honest, a pretty dope interior. A lot of people praise cars like the FDRX7 and the Mark IV Super for having like a driver focused interior. And some of those attributes can kind of be found in the RSX as well. Not a ton, but some subtle amounts. Powered by a 200 horsepower VTEC K20 A-Series engine, the Type S of the RSX is notably the most sought after. I think these cars age pretty decent as I still absolutely love the looks of them today. And paired with a six-speed manual, it also makes it really enjoyable enthusiast car to drive. I will own one of these at some point in my life. I can promise you that. I don't know why, but I just want to. And maybe I should act soon because, you know, even though these cars are floating around that seven to eight K price range right now, doesn't mean that they're not gonna go up in the near future. So let us know what car you're gonna snag on this list before, you know, they go skyrocketing in price or if there's something that we missed, make sure to let us know down in the comments below. But if you do pick something up, make sure you go snag some wheel tire suspension over fitinindustries.com for it. Get that thing looking nice and good. And then make sure to like take us on Instagram and add to the gallery and all that sort of good stuff. But I'm Jels from Fitment Industries. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next time.